I will be open and admit, and I think if every man's honest with themselves, the reason we want to be in charge of companies or work so hard or be the boss or be the manager or dedicate our lives to something, the reason we want fast cars, the reason we want big houses, it's all status signaling. Like, yes. If women didn't exist, would we really need fast cars and big houses? No, we'd live in a sleeping bag. We wouldn't care. So we've all heard of the three attraction pillars that make up the value as a man. Looks, money, and status. Status arguably being one of the most important and holding the most value. And in this video, we're gonna be taking a deep dive of what status actually is, the forms of status, and how you can actually build more status within your own lives too, all right? Subscribe and like the video. Don't forget to check out all the links down below if you wanna level up your status and dating life. Let's go ahead and get right into it. So let's think about it. What actually is status? What does that mean to build status? All it really means is having social proof and having social notoriety of who you actually are and the value you bring to society. You are an important person and you are in a position of leadership amongst men or just people in general. People know your name and people know who you are. Over the past eight, nine years, I've actually been building a lot more status across my name. I've gotten verified on Instagram, TikTok, hundreds of thousands. I think I'm over like 1.5 million followers across all platforms right now. So I know a thing or two about building status, especially online. But in this video, we're not only gonna talk about online, but we're also gonna talk about building status in person too. Now, before we get into that, we have to discuss the three forms of status. And those are situational status, niche status, and total status. Let's talk about situational first. Situational status is essentially what the name implies. It means that you have status in a given situation. There are many examples of situational status, but my favorite is the bartender. The bartender, probably doesn't make a whole lot of money, right? If you're in a nightclub or a restaurant or whatever, but since he's in a position of situational status and the reason why he is, is because everybody is trying to get his or hers attention at the given moment in the given time, which gives him leverage in a position of power because everybody wants his or hers attention, right? The bartender is a great example of that. And to be honest, a lot of positions of status is represented with the nightlife, right? Bartenders, promoters, or even bouncers or security guards outside of the club. They're in a position of situational status and because of that, they can leverage it for more opportunities, especially dating opportunities, right? I know a lot of bartenders and bouncers or security guards who get so much play just because of the position of status they are in for that given moment. Because think about it, when they leave the club, nobody cares. Nobody cares who you are. Nobody's trying to get your attention. You're back to square one. By the time you step into that bar, time you step into that work environment, you are now the man. And that is what situational status is. Another form of situational status is through networking. Meaning you go to your favorite bar, club, restaurant, place, or organization, and you know people there. Not only people, you know important people there. You may know the top managers, you may know the owner, you may have access to these important connections through your network, and because of that, that gives you situational status in the given situation or environment. The next one is niche status. An example of this, let's say you're a CEO of a small tech startup, right? Nobody knows your tech startup or the small business that you're starting. However, you're the CEO of it, and it could be a multi-million dollar business, but it's not Microsoft. It's not, you know, something where you have total or global status, right? It's more a niche, a small niche. You're important in that atmosphere. I also think social media is a great representation of niche status, right? Think of any category, fitness, rollerblading, skateboarding, all these are niches. And within those niches, there's important people or people at the top of those niches who everybody knows, but not everybody would necessarily know outside of those niches. Think of a model, right? Like a, a world-class model. They're important and everybody knows them within the modeling industry. However, outside the modeling industry, he's, you know, he or she is just another good looking person. I think those are good examples of niche status. Now the last one is called total status or global status. These are the people who are like household names. You're either an actor, a musician, an entertainer, a big, big social media personality, or you're an athlete, right? Those are pretty much the total or global status. And those are the rare, 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 rare status people, like the top 1% of status. And to be honest, most people will never reach this threshold of fame or status. Think of The Rock, Cristiano Ronaldo, 
Michael B. Jordan, Chris Brown, Drake, Russell Wilson, people like that have a total or global status, meaning they will go outside and people will swarm them and know who they are and constantly have to take pictures with them. They literally cannot go to a grocery store because they're too famous. That's total or global status. And of course, that in itself has its pros and cons. Definitely a lot of cons that people don't realize, but also it has a lot of pros, right? But here's the beauty of status, is that whether or not you're in the niche, the total, or even the situational status, you can always leverage that status into more opportunities and especially make yourself appear more attractive from a dating perspective. If you can try to find any example or situation within your own lives and the people in those positions of status or leadership, I promise you they have more access to women and more access to just people overall than you probably had, right? Exactly. But now let's talk about how you can actually build more status in your life. So one trait amongst people who have status is that they have skills and they're competent. In order to have those skills, you have to be competent to some degree and have a strong worth ethic. Nobody who has status is just a simply nobody who can't do anything and bring value to society. That's how you build status is by bringing value to society. That value could be simply looking good, right? A lot of women build status on Instagram just for simply looking good. It's more rare on the male side, but if you are an attractive guy, I've seen it. You know, these TikTokers who are getting super famous overnight just by dancing and just looking at the camera or doing these trends or whatever, solely because they look good, that's still building status, right? So even if you don't have the skill acquisition yet, you still have to be constantly thinking about how can I bring value, right? And I think the easiest way to do that is simply through social media, which we'll talk about here soon. Point is, you can't just do nothing and expect to build status. The next thing you gotta do, and this plays more into in real life principles, is that you have to be the guy who takes the lead. You have a group project at work, be the guy who wants to be the group leader, or, or even in school. If you have a job you go to, try and work towards being the manager, even the CEO. Work your way up into levels of leadership and high authority positions. That's how you build status in any company or organization that you're in. And I know we're talking about building status in the sense of dating principles, but also with more status comes more money. That's the beauty of it is like, you can talk about which one's more important, status or money, but the truth is, if you build more status, money's gonna come with that. And if you have more money, sometimes status may come with that too. So they kinda go hand in hand. But overall, don't be a follower. Don't be the guy who just sits back and watch the other guys in authority positions and leadership, and you're never trying to work your way up and get out of your comfort zone and be in those authority positions of leadership. You have to have to work towards that Otherwise, you're not gonna build status. I like to tell this story a little bit, right? So I was in ROTC in college, four years. So ROTC in itself has a hierarchy, just like any company or organization. So I was in a positions of leadership for my wing, meaning like I was the leader of the fitness organization. So I created all the fitness workout plans for the whole entire cadet wing, and I led the PT sessions three times a week. That's a high position of leadership and status. But actually my friend, he was in the highest position of leadership within RTC. He was the cadet wing leader, meaning he was like the CEO of all the cadets. You had to be voted into that position. And when you are in that position, everybody knows your name. You know, everybody has to come up and salute you like you're in a high status position. And because of that, it comes with power and influence. And, you know, if we're not talking about any fraternization things, it comes with, you know, access. <laughs> to the, the baddies, whoever are in that organization. Think about it, even in the workplace or organization, the hot secretary, she is banging the vice president. She is probably banging like the CEO. We've seen it multiple times, right? Bill Clinton, president of the United States, Monica Lewinsky, man. High status gets you access to a lot of stuff. You think, do you really think Monica Lewinsky would have done all that if he was one of the president security guards or if Bill Clinton was, you know, the janitor who like cleaned the White House, even though he looked the same and everything, he got access to Monica Lewinsky because he was the president of the United States, which is like the highest status position you could probably hold in the United States, obviously. The next thing you gotta realize about building status is that it takes time, guys. Status is one of the hardest things to build a part of the attraction pillars, and because it is the hardest thing to build, it comes with its advantages, right? It doesn't happen overnight. Sometimes it can, and we've seen it on social media with guys kind of blowing up overnight on TikTok, but for the most part, it's gonna be a grind and it takes years and years to build the level of status that you really, really want. Even me, myself, I've been 
building status for now nearly 10 years now. Now I feel like I didn't reach a point to where I had like good status until like four or five years in. And the next thing you need to do is build a social media presence. Gone are the days where you can just be the average guy with no status, maybe some status in real life, maybe, maybe you're a manager at work, but if you have no online status, you are severely missing out on your dating opportunities, your networking opportunities, and just a whole bunch of other stuff, guys. The reason why I have access to high value men and other men of status is because I built online status for myself and I have a good Instagram, I'm verified and all these other things, right? And so with that being said, not only can you leverage that for dating opportunities like sending a chick a DM and her actually seeing it, but now I can also DM other high status or high value men who may or may not be in my same niche and then I have a networking opportunity, I can meet them, we can network and stuff like that, guys. I met a lot of my high value friends through Instagram, through me sending a DM, I kid you not. So get over your fear of posting on social media. Of course, bring some value with it too. You just don't wanna just like, you just post pictures and not do anything. That's doing something, but that's not gonna really build you status unless you're super, super attractive. You have to be bringing some sort of value. And I think the easiest way to do that now is by simply speaking your ideas or help teach somebody something that you're knowledgeable in. You know, I give the example of me, myself, calisthenics, right? That's a small niche in the fitness category in itself. And because I was knowledgeable in that, I was able to teach, you know, tutorials and other things like that. And that's how I build niche status. And then from there, kind of went mainstream in some platforms. And then that's my plan to build overall and maybe even global status is by using social media as the kind of buffer or the gateway into that sort of total global status. Because you can start off as niche status on social media, but the more you build your status, you'll have opportunities being presented to you to maybe do some sort of bigger status things like being on a TV show or get into acting or maybe start your music career. So start social media today, guys, right now. And if you need help with that and wanna learn some of my strategies, then go ahead and apply for the Digital Romeo Mentorship all links will be down below. All right, so that was a video on status and how you can start building status right now. Let me know your thoughts down below. Subscribe, like, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.